Marvel's life in the AV, but I think there are two things that stand out for me personally, two qualities which Shardul possesses. Firstly is gratitude, and secondly is kindness. Shardul does not know how to say no to his fans, to everyone who comes to him for photographs and autographs, no matter how tired he is, no matter if the Mumbai team or the Indian team has lost a match or won a match. So I think these two qualities, everyone should learn from him. So Shardul, thank you for always being you, no matter what. We start with the first segment, that is some great questions put to Shardul. We'll try not to put him in a fix. Shardul, being from a small town in Palghar, how did your cricket journey begin? And when did you realize that, you know, cricket being your passion, you wanted to convert it into your profession? Okay, we'll hold the question for a while until I say good morning to everyone, all the parents, uh, Students, of course, but I would say uh, my future colleagues. Some motivation to start? <laughs> Already. I mean, I'll be associated with sports for long, long, so I'm sure we all will cross our paths again, and then you can proudly tell me that, yes, uh, once I was present at IISM and you addressed us. But yeah, and even uh, Nilesh sir or Dr. Miki Mehta, the way they addressed you all, some strong words, so I have something to catch up now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yes, we'll get back to the questions, but uh, I want to say something and uh, so basically I was in a spot where whether I should continue with, the cric with my cricket or no, uh, there were some selection issues and you know, every one of us goes through, you know, those mental challenges where you ask a lot of questions to yourself. Uh, what should I exactly do in our life for as a career to, you know, earn some bucks? So, uh, you know, I was also looking some options for education. And actually, I'm not even joking or I'm not lying, but sports management was one thing which came to my mind because, of course, my first love is sports. I love cricket and many, many other sports. But we didn't have anything like IISM in India back in the days. So, you know, great job by Nilesh sir and his wife to start an institute like IISM, which provides, uh, you know, opportunities for all the kids across the country to, you know, showcase their talent, to learn something about sports management, uh, sports science now again. And we see there are a lot of leagues that, that are going around the world in India itself, in cricket, in football, in badminton, kabaddi, mm -hmm. hockey. So you guys are going to have a lot of opportunities in your life, a uh, lot of chances to prove yourself. Um, but yeah, again, coming back to the point, back in the days, we, I, I, I did not have uh, an institute like IISM to, you know, pursue my career if I don't play cricket. So, you know, thank you to you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. And. I, I didn't know that cricketers speak so well on the mic until he spoke. <laughs> we, we, we are always uh, used to do a lot of Q&A, a lot of interviews, and that was one of the main reasons why I pushed for Q&A. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't willing to you know, just pick up a mi mic and keep saying whatever comes to mind. I, I really want to be live with you your all, very authentic, and I want to speak my mind. Whatever comes to you know, my mind, I want to speak that thing. So. Yes, we can get back to the question and answers. Great. So uh, being from a small town in Palghar, when did you realize, you know, cricket was the dream for you? You wanted to convert your passion into your profession. I'd, I'd like to thank my family for that. So my family always had a uh, sporting culture. My dad played some local cricket. Both my uncles, they've played cricket. And uh, dad, in fact, he was uh, captain of Mumbai University in, in volleyball, not in cricket, but in volleyball. So we always had that culture of, uh, you know, playing some sort of game, uh, whether it's for fun, whether it's there's some seriousness behind it, doesn't matter. But so that so that was the major thing what uh, pushed me towards pursuing cricket. And I actually never dreamt of anything apart from cricket in my life. 
maybe it was year 1996 or 7 i saw sachin tendulkar playing for the first time live on the tv uh, in uh, back in the days there used to be sharja cup i think yeah. if i am not yeah. wrong and yes. uh, so he was smashing australia left right center and i had never seen something like that ever in my life even in the even in you know gully cricket or local cricket watch whatever little cricket that i watched and i said okay this is something different let me you know watch it more then uh, even our local here hero ajit agarkar two years down the line 1998 i think he played in the shaja cup he was young was 18 years old i think coming from the ranks under 19 cricket was a great motivation for me to pursue the career and I remember uh, back in the days there was a tournament in Palgar, which was MC affiliated. So there was w one umpire who came to my house to eat lunch every Sunday. He he loved the little mutton curry that my mom cooked. Sorry, <laughs> any vegans or vegetarians here, but <laughs> but yeah, he 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 loved it. So every Sunday used to be there at our house. So he actually taught me to catch the ball, how to take the catch. We started off with the tennis ball cricket. I learned how to catch the ball and my love towards the game only grew. So, so those were my initial days and that's how my cricketing journey started. Uh, yeah, so again, grateful uh, to, to, to that umpire who taught me how to you know, catch the ball and also my family for having that sporting culture. You've always maintained when you used to travel from Palghar to Churchgate, you know, to and fro in the local trains, you weren't very used to that kind of situations. At times, you've carried your kid bag on your head. At times, you've been pushed out of the train without you noticing what is happening. Yeah. So tell us more about all that, you know, the hardships you went through to get to where you are today. That, that, was, that was tough. I mean... Uh, if someone asks me to do that again, I might not be able to do it. But uh, th th there was something present in me. Uh, we just heard Dr. Mickey Mehta saying mind over matter, right? So uh, I if I think about it largely, then I would say, no, I cannot do it. But I took it day by day. You know, Every day there was some new challenge. Uh, waking up in the morning, we're into rainy season. So. Uh, on on few occasions it would be ra raining heavy and to carry that kit bag it was tough i mean I, I i seriously don't know how how did i do that but yes there were people around me who traveled with me so they helped me and th there's a thing that i've noticed about mumbai trains i mean uh, it took me a month to understand it so we have seen the local trains and the doors of local train right and there's a pole in between so if the trains traveling this way the first half of the, uh, you know, people standing in the, in that passage, they never get down. Only the, uh, you know, later half of the people get down. So I took a month to figure out that. But once they figure out that, uh, one, you know, there, there was a tick mark for, okay, one job done right. Then about carrying kit bag, I just hugged it. And I was pushed out. There were people behind me who would, you know, just keep pushing me and that's how I got out of the train. Getting in was easier because at a times I uh, picked a train from Vira, so that's the first station. So getting in was easy, I would say. Uh, sometimes in the evening it was tough uh, getting in the train from Bandra or Dadar. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we did it. There, there was enough passion for cricket uh, to pursue it and uh, I mean, this is, this is just about cricket, but I'm sure whatever you guys do in your life, in your sectors, you'll have difficulties, but passion is one thing which keeps you going. And I think, uh, uh, I mean, passion helped me to, you know, it, I would say, it, uh, what do you call it? Instead, the job was done automatically, I would say. It made half your work easy. Yeah, I, half my work easy. I was so passionate about cricket. I said, okay, uh, let, Whatever hardships comes to me, it's okay. I'll just, I, I want to play cricket blindly. I would do it and forget the rest. I think the biggest lesson for you students is the word passion. Uh, if you have passion, I think anything can be achieved. And as Shardul said, you know, ups and downs are part and parcel of a journey. If Shardul could do it, so can you. 
Shartul, when was the, how was your last experience of traveling in the train? Was it a pleasant one? Because people have started recognizing you more and more. So how was that experience for you? My last experience was uh, coming back from South Africa tour in 2018, January. And uh, during those days, there was uh, some road construction going on. And I said, okay, I don't want to travel four hours on the car. Let me quickly catch a train. It was afternoon and I didn't think that there would be so many people present in the train. Would be re relatively easier than mornings or evenings. But yeah, I mean, uh, I got in the train and slowly people started recognizing it. But it was nothing new for me because I have done that. And like you said, uh, you know, they, there's a word which goes around in public that I'm kind enough, I'm humble. I, I really am. I mean... Uh, we don't I need you <laughs> to prove that. We all know that. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. So whoever comes, talks to me. I, I sit them down. I talk to them. Because, uh, you know, showing attitude is n not get, going to get us anywhere in life. I mean, the more you... Well said. The, the more you show attitude to people, they're going to irritate you. So it's better you keep your attitude in your pockets. Don't show it to people. Just sit down, relax, show some, show some generosity. Uh, be kind, be humble to people. And you know, that was my mantra when I, when, when, when I had that last experience of traveling in the train. I think the word empathy, the word he always uses time and again. And yes, we all know how humble and down to earth you are. <laughs> so uh, definitely sharing my own experience. In fact, I was covering a match at Mumbai Cricket Association, BKC, a few months back. Uh, Shardul was training over there. He was doing a run-up over there. Uh, I think he saw me from a few yards and he waved. So I stopped by and uh, he stopped his training to come say hello. We spoke for five minutes and I think we spoke of everything but cricket. So that is what Shardul is. The kindness, the friendships that he built, you know, last for a lifetime. So we always are very privileged to have you playing for India. But most valuably, a great person first than the cricketer. Uh, just like, you know, everyone else, Shardul, you've had ups and downs and, you know, failure and success are a part and parcel of every sports person's life. Uh, what have you learned from failure and success personally? Uh, see, success is, uh, success is never going to stay with you forever, whatever you do. Uh, as importantly, you need to, uh, you know, address the failures, but forget them. The, uh, I mean, if I failed badly in a game, and if I keep thinking about it tomorrow or in the coming game, then it's not going to help me. Because my primary job is to stay in the present, perform in a game, uh, do my role, what's required. Uh, you know, sometimes express on the ground, uh, be, in, be very intuitive, and uh, you know, perceive the information about the current game. But I, if I keep dwelling in the past, oh yes, last game I didn't do well, this, ba this batsman had hit me for a six, then uh, you know that's going to happen again. If I tell myself that, okay, I'm bowling Yorkers now, but I have to be careful that, okay, batsman doesn't flick me for a four on the leg side, it's going to happen. So basically in, in my mind, I try to you know, manifest things, but in a good way, in a, in a positive way. I tell myself that, okay, I'm going to bowl Yorkers and I'm going to take a wicket. Uh, I'm going to stop batsmen from scoring runs. And, uh, you know, at the same time, you know, so basically I would say there are two sides of a coin, the negative and the positive. You need to know the negatives and build your plans that you, do, you know, you don't fail again but think about success. And that's what we do. The great MS Dhoni also mentioned it. Like if you're too happy with your performance. You will stop trying. You will stop trying. And if you're, you know, the, the, the same way, if you're too unhappy with your performance, you will again stop trying because you'll be, you know, thinking about your past mistakes. And so 
let your past mistakes go away and think about present, plan your strategies, plan your future and tell your mind that, okay, you know, I'll do this, uh, whatever is required in the present and for future. That brings me to the topic of visualization. How important is it, you know, as a cricketer, visualization is something you do time and again. And not just, you know, from a cricketer's aspect, but even for us students here, you know, just visualizing yourself out there, chasing your dreams, doing it in such a passionate way. How important, you know, would you say is visualization in today's times? Very much. I mean, I've been doing it for years. Uh, like when I spoke about manifesting things in your mind, uh, it's also part of visualization. So uh, in, in cricket, I, uh, you see a batter or a bowler, they, they keep uh, polishing their skills, they keep inventing new things. And if you want to stay ahead of them, even you have to think about those things. Nilesa mentioned that to, to be creative in our lives, uh, read something new. The same way when you're visualizing, create some new scenarios in your mind that will open up the broad, broader aspect of anything that you're doing in life, not just cricket. I'm talking about cricket because I, uh, I'm a cricketer, but yeah, I mean, if I'm going to bowl to Steve Smith tomorrow, then he might have come with new plans. So what I do is I would just imagine uh, his batting style, the way he holds his bat and Whatever I have learned about cricket, I would, uh, you know, think about all the information and then put it uh, into my thoughts. Uh, I'll imagine, okay, with his sort of batting grip, he can hit these shots. So tomorrow he might, uh, you know, uh, come in and try something new. Yeah. Instead of uh, playing only on the offside, he might, you know, suddenly start playing on the leg side. One of his favorite shots is also on the leg side. Yes. Uh, but... But yeah, with smarter planning and with uh, smart strategies, we also can overcome that. We did it during the Australian tour, the whole bowling unit. So uh, that tour, it, it was not easy to get him out in the slips. So we said, okay, he is good on his pads, but why not put fielders on the leg side and instead of hitting us for fours or twos in the gap seal, end up hitting, uh, you know, straight into the hands of players, uh, that fielder. And Exactly it happened. I think in Melbourne, Siraj bowled him down the leg and That's right. he was caught in on leg slip or leg gully somewhere. So I so I remember again, so this this is part of uh, visualization. We visualize, we imagine that it can happen and it happened in the game. Absolutely too. You know, the art of visualization is so important. It just not Sorry, helps Ravish, you. I'm just interrupting for a minute here for you. For all the young ones. I'm sure you've seen Chardul play. I was part of that 2001 series of Australia. But in spite of me being part of that series, I still feel the series win which they achieved in that series was hands down above the actual achievements what we had because of all the adversities, challenges, difficulties, problems. You talk about every negative word which actually the entire team faced. The only person who was left to go on the field was Ravi Shastri and Bharat Arun <laughs> at one point of time. To come out as a winner and win that series, hands down to Ajinkya Rane and the entire new team who actually made it happen. Absolutely true, sir. I think the art of visualization, therefore, is so important, not just, you know, for the heck of it, but just for you to manifest what you want in life. I think it's a big, big lesson. Uh, Shardal, you've always uh, said that, you know, Ajit Agarkar has been your first bowling idol. And in fact, you manifested him into your life to such an extent that it was Ajit Agarkar who actually gave you your debut Ranji Trophy cap. So what exactly has an impact Ajit made in your life personally? And what have you garnered and life lessons that you've learned from him? So, before he handed the Ranji Trophy debut cap to me, uh, I played with him a few games for Tata's, Tata Sports Club. I was on scholarship and of course he was employed. Uh, we were on the tour of uh, Hyderabad 
and then some local time she'll cricket here in Mumbai. And I always saw him as an idol. And before that, I had never had an opportunity to see him or to meet him in person. But I don't know what he saw in me, but he walked up to me. I was not fit enough back then. I was fat, chubby. And he said, look, you have some talent and I want to help you. And he walked up to me with cones, little markers, red, blue, yellow. Where walked up to the pitch. He picked up a tape, or I don't know, he just marked some steps, taking probably about around five or six steps, placed the cone, and he said, that's the area you need to bowl. And now forget about bowling there. My mind is somewhere else. I am thinking he's such a big cricketer, he's played for India, 190-odd ODIs, close to 300 wickets in ODIs, around 20-25 test matches. And that person is walking with cones and setting up a drill for me, bowling drill. I was taken aback. And then I said, okay, look, boss, uh, whatever I'm doing in my life, the way I'm playing my cricket, I need to channelize it. Can't be just haywire, aaj uthe, Back, pagda, chalo, khelo, enjoy kia. You know, they has need to bring more seriousness in. Then I started asking him more questions about training, about fitness. How do we, how, how does he think about taking a wicket in the game? So all those questions started. And I think icebreaker moment was from his side where uh, he set up that drill. And yes, of course, uh, whatever I did, a lot of credit goes to me, but you know, th there, there are these, uh, I would say, personalities in cricket who have helped me time and again, and uh, you know, as much credit goes to them also. So in life, I believe we need to have idols, we need to have gurus, and we need to take inspiration from them. We, um, so yeah, I mean, again, coming back to that uh, Ranji Trophy debut cap, I was very happy and I, I didn't even do well in that game, to be honest. But, you know, everything was almost like a dream come true. And from there on, it was never looking back. It was God's plan. Yes, sir. You know, you've always been a stalwart when it comes to Mumbai cricket. You've always, you know, raised your hand when the seniors were not around. You've performed, you've, you've picked wickets, you've, you know, curbed runs wherever possible. Uh, how difficult was it for you as an outsider because you were not from the Mumbai setup? You were an outsider. How difficult was it for you to find a place in that Mumbai team? <laughs> it was damn difficult. At the times, I would say uh, getting into Mumbai team was difficult than getting into an Indian team because it was as good as Indian team. Uh, in in my debut season, if if I announce the eleven, you'll be surprised. And there was Wasim Jafar, Ajinkya Rane, Rohit Sharma, Abhishek Nair, Ramesh Pawar, Ajit Agarkar, Zahir Khan, Sachin Tendulkar. So where's my place in this squad, boss? <laughs> Surya was warming the bench. I mean, he played a season ago, but uh, that season he was warming the be bench because all the stalwarts were uh, playing uh, in, in, in rotation, of course. And then the only slot that was available was an opening slot. So. But Kaustubo was playing, I think, so Surya missed out. Yeah, so I made it to that team, and I am proud of myself. But yeah, again, I remember talking to Abhishek. He said to me, if you want to get into Mumbai team, then your, then your competition is with Zahir Khan, Ajit, Avishkar, and Dhawal Kulkarni. So if I want to get into the team, I have to be better than them. Yeah. Whether I'm better than them or no, that only time will tell. But yes, that was the benchmark. Uh, to get into Mumbai team. Somehow I got there. Once I walked into the dressing room, it was not difficult because the personalities we had, they understood cricket, they understood the essence of life. Sachin or Zaheer or Wasim Jafar, you name it, they all walked up to me on their own. I never had to go to them and ask for anything. They said, boss, welcome to Mumbai team. We are here for you, whatever you need. So again, uh, you, know, you know, I would like to address a point here that coaches or teachers, uh, you know, we need to, you know, break that ice with students and 
you know treat them as your family and uh, you'll see they can do amazing things absolutely very well said uh, you mentioned abhishek nayar and i think he's played such a vital aspect in you becoming the fitness freak that you are he also uh, told you to join the attitude training studio uh, how big as an impact abhishek nayar you know has carved and made you uh, the fitness freak you are today so after 12 13 season all the stalwarts retired i mean uh, the following season wasim bhai was injured and uh, sachin sir he retired uh, zack retired uh, ajit agarkar also retired so rohit and ajinkya they were playing international cricket so abhishek was the only senior guy who was a bridge between uh, the other senior guys and us the youngsters yes. th- those who walked into the team and uh, you know his ways of uh, <laughs> training an athlete or cricketer were different are uh, different yeah, are different of course cricket is a skill sport but he understood that uh, slowly and steadily it's also going towards a power sport so whatever t20 cricket today we see is power cricket so how far you can hit the ball how fast you can bowl so uh, you know probably he understood that cricket is changing and again he told us boss if you want to stay ahead of the time or if you want to change uh, with time then cricket is going towards being a power game so you have to be fit you have to get even fitter yes uh, you know build your strength build your power and in coming days you wouldn't get enough rest there will be lot of traveling so looking at all the aspects uh, he, he i mean he played quite a influential roles in our life and uh like me even shreya so siddesh in mumbai so he he trained us that way the ways were different but they were very effective i would say absolutely and of course abhishek nayar in his training methods are going to benefit everyone that he trains uh, shardul your debut ranji season that is the 2012 2013 season uh, was life changing for you because you know you just stepped into the mumbai cricket arena in the senior lot you know playing with stalwarts in the side and that was special because mumbai won the cup at that point of time uh, but what were the personal efforts that you know you took in the off season that helped you become shardul thakur because exactly the next season you were one of the highest wicket takers for mumbai yeah like i said i was fat and chubby and first season i enjoyed i had half of these things i wasn't understanding what's going around me i was really uh, you know excited and enjoying to be in the ranji trophy team and uh, you know i said okay my i have achieved one of my dreams uh, and life was you know too big for me at that time at that time of uh, you know my career but slowly as we won the tournament didn't have uh, good games towards the end then it again it started uh, you know i started having thoughts in my mind started asking questions to myself seeked help from abhishek like you said other senior players they said you need to get fit they uh, showed me the Uh, other side of the cricket like i mentioned okay then i said let's start with running and diet the f- the first day i was on the ground lying like that and you know trust me i felt like vomiting and you know i i felt like i'm going to die but those were the things i uh, you know had to do again coming back to the point that mind over matter right so yes. uh, when when I, when i started running they 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 came a time uh, whatever drill i did that okay now i want to give up but then if i push through that period i was amazed to see that i could do more 10 laps more 12 laps so in our lives whatever we are going to do whatever we do there comes a time which tells us okay now you have to give up probably stop pushing yourself you're not going to achieve anything more but if we push through that period then we'll be amazed that we can achieve achieve even more than what we think when batters you know dominate on field especially in the t20 arena you know how is it that you stay cool calm and composed as a bowler you know because you are always a thinking bowler you think one step ahead of the batter how do you stay cool and calm you know when you are being hit for so many runs i think years of playing cricket now i have realized that it's a batter's game 
So <laughs> I'm bound to get hit for sixes. Like I said, uh, the idea is to letting go your past. And uh, a, lo a lot of times we confuse past with only yesterday. But it can be a recent past as well. So my first ball of the over, if it's hit for a six, it's gone. Can't do anything about it. What, what I need to think is about the second ball that I'm going to bowl. So my, I try to, you know, channelize my energies, uh, you know, channelize my focus on the next ball that I'm going to bowl. Because we are not going to change the fact that has already happened, but we can certainly change our present and future. So all my focuses and all my energies are on the next ball. That's what I would say. I think that's the best piece of advice you can give our students as well. You know, just concentrate one thing at a time. Don't dwell on the past. Uh, Shadal, you've been a bowler who's played under so many various captains in Mumbai cricket as well as in Team India. Also the IPL. How has that experience been for you personally working with none other than Mahindra Singh Dhoni? I think everyone wants to hear that. Well, that's a mandatory question wherever we go. Of course, the legacy that he has left behind, three ICC Champions trophies and grooming so many youngsters. Uh, even the current greats, I would say, Virat, Rohit, everyone in their life had a time where they could get dropped, right? But yes, the great MS Zoni, he backed him. Uh, we all know uh, what they did after that, 2012 onwards, up until now. Uh, playing with him is always special because he allows us to grow. He allows us to, you know, come up with our own plan. So he'll never spoon feed us. Again, coming back to your point, being creative. <laughs> so, yeah, so we have to come up with our plans. So it's a, he'll say tomorrow I might not be available behind the wickets. What will you do? He said, go back to your room, think about the game, come with your plans. If it doesn't work, then I'll intervene. And even if it, even if my plan doesn't work, then there's no plan in the world. Then it's God's plan, right? So there's plan A, there's plan B. The plan C is God's plan, I would say. So who's a better captain, MS Dhoni or Rohit Sharma? <laughs> let's put him in a fix. He's been having a good good run now. Let him, let's put him in a fix. Who's a better captain, MS Dhoni or Rohit Sharma? You can choose to say no comments, but you know, we, you'll have to answer this one for Nilesa. And his wife is recording the answer. <laughs> Rohit is my friend first. So I would say MS Dhoni. Rohit will understand. Even if he feels angry, I would, you know, go and, you know, butter him. Rohit, no problem, you know. So yeah, MS Dhoni. Vitali, this will... video has to go to Rohit. Rohit Sharma, exactly. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, and then he'll, he'll be Rohit Sharma with me on the phone. We have seen him many times in the interviews and all how he speaks. Yes, absolutely. How do you think an ideal player and a coach relationship should be? Nothing, I mean, uh, similar to what relationship a parent and a child, you know, they have. Uh, because coaches are someone who would watch you from morning to evening. And I feel it is coach's responsibility to break that ice, to try to learn what kind of a player I have in my team. Like every individual is a different individual, I believe. And you know, the way I think, his way of thinking might be different. And player always goes through so many emotions during the game. Um, there's whole country who's watching the player playing live. So we can imagine the moment he fails, he his world status because nowadays social media is, <laughs> you know, so full of galleys whenever we don't perform. And we can't avoid it either. The notification will just keep coming. So we are always on the screen. That's well, that's one downside of social media again. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, Especially now in, in the modern world, there's so much pressure on everyone that, uh, you know, for the matter of fact, coach needs to understand it. He needs to approach the player, try and understand him, what kind of a person he is, try to build that relationship, give a lot of freedom, uh, freedom to express, freedom to fail, 
uh, failures again teaches a lot. Um, um, well, my coach did it, and from time to time, that guidance is also important. The scolding is also important again, uh, and it. I feel it's a equal responsibility, like parent and student, uh, parent and a child. Uh, when, when parents give us so much in return as a child, we need to give them back. So it's the same with a coach and a player. When coach feeds us uh, with, with different information, different kinds of information about cricket, about the opponents, we need to give them something back. So, uh, so yeah, it's a very uh, delicate but an important relationship, again, I would say. You know, you mentioned Elish, sir. So you've been a part of a team when Elish, sir, was your senior as well. What memories do you have of Nilesh Kulkarni, the cricketer, in the same team that you have played with? He has an elephant memory. I should be, <laughs> I should be lying or t telling the truth. No, no, please tell the truth. Uh, so the national one. Yeah, national one. <laughs> so... Uh, I, I was fielding at point, I think, and uh, they had just come from a brilliant Ranji Trophy season. I would say roller coaster Ranji Trophy season, 6 7, 2006 2007, where Mumbai lost three games in a row. And Mumbai was going to relegate to the plate group. That has never happened in the history of cricket. And being in, in the spot, being in that position, we went on to win the Ranji Trophy. So that was, you know, unreal achievement that we could see. And so we were playing this Polish Shield game the next following season, 2008, I believe. Uh, it was bowling from the far end, not the pavilion end. I was fielding at point here near the Khao Galli. You all know Khao Galli? Yeah, so uh, it's a small corner there. And Amol tried to play an inside-out shot. And he thick-edged it, went a little high, loopy. I ran. I ran for my life and I dived. <laughs> I didn't make a catch. Went for four. And this guy, he was abusing me from the other end. <laughs> he said, I can't r literally repeat those words here. <laughs> or, <laughs> they were the nasty. They were nasty. He was nasty, I mean. Yeah, he, his group, they all were nasty, but again, uh, they, they wanted best out of us. That's why they were nasty. So the, the point here is not dropping the catch and putting efforts. Yes, the, the, there was one, one more loophole, I would say here, the way I looked at it. Yes, I did dive. I did put an effort to take that catch, but it still went for four. So somehow I should have stopped it. Maybe gave give a run away or maybe two, but not that four. So probably that scolding was for giving away the four. <laughs> but it made you into the greatest cricketer that you are today. So Nilesa, your uh, <laughs> <laughs> words of advice and wisdom did work to a certain extent. No, no, I have no role. He had the talent, he had the grit, he had the ability, and he had the hunger to scale and achieve what he deserved today. So I think I see as a senior there are times where you go through these ups and downs and more importantly I wanted to get Amul Muzumdar out yes then the catch so the my scolding frustration was to miss out getting Amul Muzumdar out and the frustration came out on him because you know when you play for long enough you want to go one step higher within your friends also when they are the opponents so I didn't want to lose to Amul I wanted to get his wicket I was 16 years old by the way <laughs> It was important for you to mention this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now he's very, very jolly now. He jokes around, he laughs around, he gives good piece of advices. So now he's very relaxed. I give advices. I used to give advices then also, but I used to <laughs> scold a lot. Okay. Uh, Shadud, you were part of uh, the World Cup uh, runner-up team in 2023. India just missed out versus Australia in the final. Uh, cut to, you know, not being a part of this T20 team under Rohit Sharma that won the T20 World Cup. You know, that phase was difficult for you because obviously injury happened, the setback happened. How did you make a bigger comeback? You know, what has the process been for you like? Well, I just... Uh remember that day when the national anthem was going on because 
that was the last time when I stood up for national anthem when during the finals of the ODI World Cup. So I almost had tears in my eyes because I could remember that day. But yeah, I mean, sorry, I'm emotional right now. But it was just one bad day for us, for the country, because I believe we played, uh, I mean, we played to our fullest ability. I mean, Absolutely. there was no team in that tournament which was near to us. It was just one bad day uh, why we lost. But we covered it up now in T20 World Cup. And I had a little superstition about this T20 World Cup. So uh, I, I was watching a game in New York. Well, I learned later that pitches were tough to bat there. But when I watched the game, we were three wickets down, four wickets down against USA. And I said, okay, this is not going great. Let me not watch it. And the whole tournament, I watched replays. And during the match, I was following live scores on Crick Info. So that was my superstition. Uh, but yeah, we brought the trophy back after 16, 17 years in T20 cricket, ICC trophy back after 12 years. Feels great. I mean, cricket is one sport which uh, binds the nation. We must have seen how full was Marine Drive back then, yes. uh, no, a few days back. And you know, we, we play we play cricket to see that kind of joy amongst the people. Yes, of course, it is our passion, but uh, you know, sub subconsciously we also think about you know the joy that we are going to provide you guys when you are watching us on the TV. Absolutely yeah. true. I think uh, one of the things for all of you to wake you up also, he deserves round of applause for taking India into the finals in India in a 50 over also. <laughs> the entire team. Because to get into finals with not losing a match is no mean feat all by itself. It's just a matter of your luck, which actually was tilted towards Australia that day. But their efforts and achievements was phenomenal to get India into the finals. Well done, Chatul. Absolutely. And the and biggest of biggest achievements. And for all of us, we all wanted Rohit to lift the cup at least one World Cup yeah. emotionally. Absolutely too. Uh, you know, Shadal, you mentioned superstitions. I'm sure most of them don't know the kind of superstitions you've had. Uh, you've eaten food continuously in one restaurant for four days in a row. You've eaten cheese omelette continuously so that, you know, you were doing well in one particular match. You've sat at the window seat at the right side for I don't know how long, you know, whether it was Mumbai or Ranji Trophy. What is the latest superstition, Shadal? You are exposing cricketers' lifestyle, baby Shadal. I hope you understand that. <laughs> no, I after so many years of uh, playing cricket, I have realized that it's better I don't follow any superstitions because it's all in the mind. Now my superstition is uh, to break the superstition. So I, s I, I mean, I take a seat anywhere I like in the bus. There's no right side, there's no left side, there's no window, there's no aisle seat. I sit wherever the seat is. This is 10 years experience, by the way, talking. <laughs> After 10 years, he's reached to this now. <laughs> yeah, but yes, for for the longest, we all have had different kind of superstitions. Also with also with the wake up timing, sometimes you know. Yes. Yeah. I mean These guys are lucky that they don't share rooms. <laughs> we used to share rooms, and it used to we used to hate that to share rooms. Aaj kaun uthega subah pehle alarm mein? Yeah, I can understand the fight. We I've I've been through that in age group cricket, and we used to take turns. So one guy would wake up at six in the morning. But, uh, you know, I would somehow convince, the, convince my roommate that, okay, I'm, I'm a fast bowler, I'm tired, so please wake up early, you know, give me a second chance to wake up. You know who was my first roommate for Indian cricket team? One gentleman called Saurav Ganguly <laughs> for 45 <laughs> days. He, we were, in those days... He's not going to get up we were, we were We were quarantined in one room, typically, for 45 days. <laughs> He's and he's not going to get up before. No, uh, it no was time. only me, Junior. I only had to get up every single morning. And then and you, make tea you for gave Adha. it back to other youngsters in Mumbai team. Uh, <laughs> we have what to follow the legacy. What comes away goes away also, yeah. absolutely. Uh, Shalto, the importance of lifelong friendships in cricket. You know, you've been super close to Rohit Sharma, uh, Harmeet Singh, who now plays for USA, Atif, uh, Siddhesh Lad. You know, how important are lifelong friendships? I think uh, the people that you mentioned, I, 
I can literally talk to them about anything and everything in my life. Uh, so uh, yes, now I have my better half in my life, <laughs> my wife. But uh, before I had her, I used to, you know, talk to them about each and everything. And even now, when it comes to cricket, if I'm feeling low or you know I have some doubts in my mind, I would just uh, call up Atif. Though he's not played IPL or he's not played for India, but sometimes all you need to hear from your friend is you know all is okay i mean you, you you are doing a great job already and he tells me that there are millions of people in india those who want to uh, you know be in my place and then i realize that yes you know if i don't get a chance to play the game it's okay i mean you know when when we look at our country there are 150 crore people who are eyeing for the spots but um, like Dr. Mickey Mehta said, sky is huge. So if you, if you dream, if if you uh, have it in you, probably it will accommodate you somehow and in some way. True. Thank you, Shardul. I'd now uh, like the floor to be open to questions from our students. If there are any, but no personal questions, please. You can I have the first question? Give your name, and then you can ask the question. I'll be just taking a few questions. Hi, sir. I am Hirak Dugar. I just wanted to ask you from people seeing Sachin as God of Cricket to seeing you as Lord, how does it feel to you with your wife being here? With my wife being here? Uh, see, I mean, we do have dreams in our life, right? So, you know, while playing cricket, I also dreamt of, you know, having a wife, having a family. Sharing, uh, you know, sharing my experiences with her, sharing my highs and lows with her. And I'm not even kidding. Those were my dreams. And, uh, you know, as, as life goes on, as the career goes on, we see that every three or four years down the line, we are positioned at different stages in our life, and which also allows us to take personal decisions. So for the longest, uh, you know, credits to her for she waited for me, you know, for years. But uh, yeah, at, at some stage I could decide, yes, now, you know, I'm uh, well enough that I, I could start a family and thankful to the sport itself that it has provided me. And to, to, to share this auditorium with you all and to with her, it feels great. Honestly, I was nervous when I came here onto the stage, looking at so many people, never uh, you know, picked up a mic and spoke in front of so many people. Yes, playing in front of cameras and the whole nation is one thing, but talking also puts me under pressure. Another secret revealed. Yeah. Can I have the next question? Anyone? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, Shardul, sir. Firstly, big fan. I am Arunav Barpajari. So my question to you is pretty basic, actually. So what was the feeling after that historic GABA win, which was said to be the Tuta hai GABA ka ghaman. So what were the scenes in the dressing room? What was the feeling? Was it relief or was it satisfaction? Were you guys ecstatic? Or what was it like after that historic, after Rishabh Pant hit that winning boundary? We were really happy and we went crazy. I mean, we, uh, we, never, we are never satisfied because uh, satisfaction will only you know, pull us down later that, okay, we are satisfied, we won everything, now we can take it easy. But unfortunately, that's not the nature of the game. You have to always pick up your shoes and, you know, be at it. Uh, but like, like, like you asked, yes, we were really happy about that win and we wanted to show Australia that, yes, we are here to play and we are here to conquer because the things that they did, did with us and the way they treated us on that tour, it was very difficult. We were uh, in the midst of COVID and, COVID and uh, we were put up in a bubble, yes, uh, that, that was the way about going things. But even in, the, even in the bubble, the way they treated us was very horrible. Uh, I mean, for four or five days, there wouldn't be any housekeeping services in the hotel. We had to do everything on our own after playing for eight long hours. You want to change your bed sheets, you would have to walk, walk up the stairs for four or five floors, get the bed sheets. When you're tired, come change it, do your own things. And, you know, going from 
uh, Sydney to Brisbane. We also heard the governor, governor of Lady Governor of Bri uh, Queensland, saying that if Indians don't want to come here, well, don't come. We don't want to host them, or we are not happy hosting them. So there were a lot of negative things that uh, th that were being said about us to put us under pressure, and. I heard some interview from Team Payne somewhere recently. That man was absolutely lying because he was just saving himself by making up things in the media and uh, covering up that we didn't put any pressure on Indian team and we gave them whatever they wanted. But I know the truth of it. Uh, our coach Ravi Shastri, Virat had left, Ajinke was leading. They both were in, in a regular fight with the uh, cricketing board of Australia to get get the things that we wanted but uh, yeah i mean i mean anyway um, uh, coming to the point that yes it was difficult the whole tour injuries came, uh, kept happening since game 1 till the game last even in the last game saini got injured uh, natarajan also got injured and in the second innings last spell siraj and me bowled nine overs each because there was no one after us to bowl and we had to push, uh, so that, th again, that's one satisfaction. Uh, but after the game, yes, we all went crazy. And first time ever, we didn't even look at Australians after winning. We said, go and sit back in your dressing room. So Shardul, basically, Gaba ka nahi Australia ka ghaman tuta. Uh, the next question, please. Hello, sir. Myself, Riddhi Kandoi. With Olympics starting, sir, which is one sport that you're supporting? And who is your role model besides cricket? Uh, right now, the national sensation Neeraj, of course. I mean, he's he's already won the gold medal. Hoping we, for two gold medals. This yeah, year. yeah, two gold medals. And I really want our nation to do well in athletics as well. I want to see uh, people going into that last race of 100 meters, which is a feature race. Yes, we make it to the Olympics, but. Uh, never went to semi-finals or finals of the 100 meter sprinting, 200 meter sprinting. So I want, uh, you know, our, our boys, our girls to, you know, participate in those semi-finals and finals. I think apart from cricket, uh, I've looked at Roger Federer a lot, the way he has shaped up his career. We, he has openly spoken about all the mental issues that he had being a kid and from there to become the legend of the sport, the way he's carried himself, uh, you know, the way he's respected his family, the way, you know, he has overcome all, all the hurdles in with, whether it's physical, whether it's mental or beating the opponents. I think a, l a lot of credit goes to him for showing the world that yes, uh, the barrier of winning 20 Grand Slams can be broken. So, yes, he's one person who I look at. Thank you, sir. Hopefully, we have more six grams of gold this year for our country. Yes, we should. In fact, tally should go, f go up to 10. Very good afternoon, sir. I am Sage Veed, and I want to ask you about how was your experience playing for CSK, and how is CSK different from any other franchisee? Uh, the culture that we have in CSK uh, resembles a lot that the culture we have in our family, the way they treat us, the way they keep our wives, our, our parents, our friends. So cricket is one thing, but they also value a life in general. So they never say no to anything. And like I said, MS allows us to grow as a player. So management, the CSK management, they allow us to grow as a person also. So, you know, I've seen quite a few troubled players walking into CSK and suddenly realizing, oh, where are we? I mean, the way they have had fights on the ground, they'll come to CSK and suddenly they'll be a changed person. Shane Watson, for instance. So we, we saw him always picking up fights when he was in the RR team. But when he came to CSK, all of a sudden, we see him picking no fights at all. and you know, respecting the opponents the same uh, way in general. So, I mean, yeah, it uh, they, they, they teach us a lot 
about life also with cricket and um, I, I feel whatever we do in our life uh, in any any sector for that matter we might be great but as a person also we need to be humble we need to be kind we need to treat people well in general so that's what I've learned being in that franchise here. Any more questions? Okay, we'll just take the last one. Okay, I am Kamesh from Senai. How was your feeling after 2019 IPL final? 20 <laughs> oh, the one we lost. Uh, see, it's, uh, it's part and parcel of the game. Uh, I would say I was the face of the loss because I was present at the last ball, but there were a lot of things that went wrong in the game. There were dropped catches, then uh, in batting also to start with, we were in the position where we should have finished that game with no loss. Uh, we were 60 odd runs in eight over itself, chasing 130, 140. So from that position coming, uh, the, the game going in the last over is not okay, I feel. But uh, yeah, it's part and parcel of the game. Cricket's a funny game, they say. And I heard uh, the great MS Dhoni say that cricket is one sport which resembles a lot with life. Every day, every hour, every minute is different. You go through a lot of emotions. Uh, things are, probably things would be merry right now at 12 o'clock, but one o'clock might go totally against you. And you have to deal with those kind of situations. And yes, I was the face of that loss, but come a long way from that, improved my batting a lot. That was one game where I disappointed my team, probably disappointed all the fans. But after that, there have been many games in my life in general where I've Partnership also... Partnership with uh, Washington Sundar. Yeah, I mean, of course, right, you mentioned it. So there have been a lot of games where I also made proud, uh, made everyone proud, the fam my family, fans, every people watching the sport. I think I'll just sum it up in Thank one you. line for it. See, as, as a sports person, when you get into a work mode, one of the most significant quality employees will look for, you start accepting failures. You don't shy away from it. You don't run away from it. I think that's what sport teaches us. Sport's what taught us to us uh, in, in, in life. And if we start implementing that, the life is beautiful. That's wonderfully put. I think everything sums up uh, your words, sir. Uh, Shardul, thank you so much. Uh, Nilesh, sir, thank you so much. I request you uh, to now join the other dignitaries uh, downstairs, and we can then have a great picture of everyone together. Thank, thank you, Shardul. Thank you, everyone.